We are here today. My name is Trey. I'm the director of Academy of Cannabis Science and so pleased to be here with Mary J. White, our Cooking with Cannabis excellent chef, um, <laughs> who's been doing this a number of years, uh, trains community members, trains other professionals, um, hosts dinners, you name it, has two cookbooks, and is the author for our Cooking with Cannabis class. So we're glad to have you here today, just post Thanksgiving. So I know this is a holiday weekend and a family weekend. Mary, thank you for doing this. I'm going to step out, out of the frame and let Mary take it, but we're glad to have you all here today. Thanks, T. Don't you love Trey? He's so cute. Students, how are you guys? Um, today I wanted to show you, well, something that I've been playing with lately, okay? And it's just, it's freaking awesome. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with our friend Hashish, but this is Ooh. three grams of hash. Now, I get mine from Sikugo, which is um, a Washington company, but they're pretty much up and down the West Coast. And when you do want hash, and after this, I think you will try some. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm, delicious. Anyway, so the reason I want to talk to you all about hash is because, um, well, number one, it's delicious. But I think more than anything, what I'm really discovering about this beautiful product is that it is extremely easy to work with. OK, you know, when you're dealing with our, our friend cannabis, you know, the plant material, if you were going to infuse uh, a pound of butter, you're going to need an ounce of plant material. OK, so, you know, I always use my double boiler and, you know, use it to to do my infusions and stuff. But when you're working with the plant material and you guys know this, you know, when you decarb in the oven, you get a whole lot of smell. Right. And then when you're when you're doing your butter or your oil, you know, your fat infusion for your six to eight hours, it's a little stanky. Now, if you live in an apartment, this can be a problem. The awesome thing about the hash, you guys, you know, it's a very little smell. I'm going to say no smell, okay? And instead of that four to six hour thing, you're looking at about 15 minutes. It's, it's really easy to work with. And if you're dealing with a lot of pain or if you have someone that's ill, I'm going to really say use hash for your infusions because it's really freaking strong and so you know rather than mounds of you know plant material you just have a few grams of something wonderful now it's obviously you have to decarb because hash is basically you know all the little white sparkly things the trichomes this is just a concentration of those they're squeezed together and made into kind of a, a log in this case right but you do want to decarb it now <laughs> I put mine in a little tiny bowl and in the in the toaster oven, 20 minutes, 240 degrees. Okay, but again, and, and it's going to look about the same. I mean, it doesn't even really melt much. It's just going to come out and be kind of softer and wonderful. And then whatever your fat is. Um, today I'm using already infused coconut oil, but you know, coconut oil, olive oil, butter, bacon fat. There you go. And like I say, instead of the 46 hours, it's like stirring continuously about 15 minutes. Yes. So that said, oh. So a little bit more about the decarb, by the way. Um, you know, I've been doing this so long, I just assume everyone knows all the things. But you do need to decarboxylate your cannabis, whether it's, you know, hash like we're using today or flour. Um, what you're doing basically is removing that extra carbon molecule, decarboxylating the cannabis. So that makes it bioavailable. If you just took this hash, you wouldn't get high, right? Because it has not been heated to get rid of that extra molecule. So anytime you're working with hemp or hash or any of the cannabises, you always have to decarboxylate. Um, if you're using plant material, you want it on a, a sheet tray, spread out your ounce or whatever you're using, cover it with foil and get it in a 240, 250 degree oven for about half an hour, okay? Some people go a little bit lower for longer. Some people go 310 degrees for eight minutes. There's different ways to do it, but you don't wanna burn up the pot, obviously. You just wanna make sure that it's gotten heated enough to get rid of that extra molecule, okay? So again, the great thing about hash is it's not as much work 
It's just not as much work. The other thing we need to talk about though, and this is super important with the hash especially, is um, how to calculate the dosage. The people, the nice folks at Sitka Gold, I just love playing with this hash. Um, I have not heard back from them on the exact milligrams. Okay, so I've done a bunch of research, looked all around, and with regular pot, sativa, indica, hybrids, you're looking at approximately 100 milligrams of cannabinoids per gram of pot, okay? With hash, because it's beautifully concentrated and delicious, you're gonna get between 300 and 500 milligrams per gram. So remember that what you're working with when you're working with hash is gonna be at least three to five times stronger than your regular pot, okay? Now, um, I don't wanna throw a bunch of numbers at you. I'm just gonna tell you that what we're making today, these, these little almonds that we're gonna cover with delicious medicated chocolatey goodness, they're gonna be about 80 milligrams per, per, okay? So if you are a person that has a high tolerance, or if you're dealing with someone who's, who's ill and needs a lot of help, something like this, something with hash in it, is gonna really um, make it easier on everybody. And you know, for me, because I have a lot of tolerance, because I've been making edibles for years, I can't really try my stuff anymore because I weigh 300 pounds. But for me, um, I need, if I was gonna you know, medicate with edibles exclusively, I would need about 150 milligrams. Now, if you're eating a 10 milligram cookie, that's over a dozen cookies. No one needs that. But with hash, that's not a problem. Okay, so what we're making today, my, like most of my recipes, super simple, okay? Super simple. Um, hands are clean. So all we're gonna do with this is we're surrounding toasted almonds. And these are just regular raw almonds. I put them in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 so they're nice and toasted. Now, if you are a person that likes a lot of cannabis, what you can do before you make this recipe is you can saute these rather than put them in the oven, saute them in cannabis butter for, <laughs> for a little while and uh, you'll have an extra, extra special treat. So I've calculated this recipe for 30, 30 pieces of candy, okay? I think the recipe says 24, that's kind of an approximation. Point is, if you are dealing with 400 milligrams per gram of hash, okay? As opposed to, you know, the 100 in regular cannabis. If you're doing the 400, um, a half a cup of the infused coconut oil, what we're using today, a half a cup is gonna be 2,800 milligrams. That's so many milligrams. <laughs> but then you divide it down, you know, 30 nuts or however many nuts you're using, and then you can figure it out, okay? I hope that makes sense. You can ask me questions when I'm done making little treats. So this is a thing where you basically take either butter or in this case, coconut oil. Now I'm using the solid coconut oil today because I found with the butter in the recipe, even though it's delicious, um, they melt so fast that it's kind of hard to put them together. But with the coconut oil, I mean, this is, you know, this is room temp and it, it, it ain't moving. So if you, if you, when you try this recipe, you might want to try using infused coconut oil. But again, either way, they got to stay in the fridge, you know, because they're, they're just gooey and soft and delicious. And honestly, y'all, you're not going to have them long enough to have to worry about keeping them because you're going to go, because they're really good. So we have half a cup of medicated infused coconut oil. We're going to put in half a cup of powdered sugar. Okay, half a cup of really nice, high quality, vegan and groovy co cocoa powder, and half a cup of almond meal. Now I get this at Trader Joe's, um, and I know Trader Joe's is pretty much everywhere, but if there isn't one around you, almond meal, almond flour, um, you can take some almonds really and just put them in your, in your uh, Cuisinart or in your blender till they make this meal. The point of this, though, is just to kind of maximize the almond flavors, right? Because 
The other great thing about hash, very little pot flavor. I mean, very little because, oops, because you're not dealing with, you know, the chlorophyll and the stems and all the things. It's just that. So it tastes really good. So basically, I got all this stuff in here. Now, I'm going to, every time I talk to you guys, if there's a sweet involved, I'm going to bug you about using salt. Because every time you use a sweet thing, whether you're baking or whatever it is, you've got to balance that flavor out. So maybe half a teaspoon of salt in there to just kind of make it delicious. Speaking of delicious, you're going to want a little bit of vanilla extract. Again, when you guys really start playing with cooking with cannabis, you'll find that um, the biggest challenge is flavors. And for me, I have found things like um, extra lemon, extra cinnamon. I have one recipe, it takes a tablespoon of cinnamon and you can't even taste the cinnamon, but you also can't taste the pot. And some people like it, most of us, it's very vegetal, very earthy. So it's always good to play with those flavors. Now, here we have almond extract. This is very tricky. Only use a teeny, tiny, tiny, tiny bit. Otherwise, it's going to taste like nasty chemicals. I mean, this isn't nasty chemicals, but you know what I mean? Too much almond extract is nasty. So, teeny, tiny, whoop. You can't see this, but it's a teeny, tiny bit. Okay, whoop. see, like that, okay? Now, we're going to moosh it up. That's a very technical chef term, mooshing. And you know, I'm probably going to need to use my hands because this coconut ugh, oil, solid coconut oil, is very, very solid. So my hands are clean. And these, by the way, are the best tools in the kitchen, these and a sharp knife. Just get in there and moosh it up. Yep. So we're mooshing, we're mooshing. Oh, dear. This might take a minute. Um, <laughs> do you guys have any questions yet? No questions. Seriously? Come on. Okay, have you guys tried cooking with cannabis yet? What, Chris and Joey? Yeah? Um, so Joey, what are you doing? Um, I, know, I have no experience whatsoever with cooking with cannabis, so this is oh. all completely brand new to me. <laughs> oh, great. Okay, good, 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 good. What's your main concern? Um, I think what you said a little earlier was the taste because um, mm -hmm. obviously I've had edibles um, like the Rice Krispies and the chocolate bars. Yeah. Um, and I mean, a lot of them from the dispensaries here in Vegas. I'm not sure if it's different anywhere else. Um, mm -hmm. They do tend to have a strong uh, cannabis taste in them, just depending yeah. on what you get, I guess, maybe. So right. my concern would be to try to conceal the taste as much as possible, probably, if I was to cook or make something with it. Yeah, um, yeah. Because it can be a little bit of a turn off sometimes to people. <laughs> oh, I, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Um, and especially if it's really strong, because you're like, why am I eating this meatloaf and it tastes like it came out of a horse's ass? You exactly. Know? I mean, excuse me, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and the flavor is always an issue, you know, always something people are, are concerned about and also dosages because That's what I've yeah. learned with doing this for so long is most of us are used to, <laughs> but yeah. we're used to the, you know, American way of medicine, right. which is, here's a pill and it's 0.5 milligrams. Mm. This is natural medicine. This is grandma medicine. Yeah. And, um, it doesn't really work that way. You right. have to really start to pay attention to your body. Mm -hmm. um, like you eat one of these candies and you're going to, you know, wait an hour, see how you feel. Wait right. a little longer, see how you feel. Mm -hmm. um, and you're going to have to be able to determine for yourself what works for you. Right. Um, that's why I'm a big fan of what I call infused additions. Because um, even if you and all your friends love getting high, everyone is different. And everyone has different tolerance. Everyone has different flavor profiles that they like. Mm -hmm. And this isn't coming together very well. <laughs> I think I needed to warm it up. But point is, when you have additions like um, you know condiments or mayonnaise or ketchup or you know a crumb topping, uh, stuff like that, when you have that kind of stuff, 
you can absolutely determine what's right for you and people can choose their own dosages. You know what I mean? Right. Um, in my second cookbook, the CBD cookbook for beginners, the publisher wanted a, a lot of, you know, regular recipes. So there's, yeah. you know, like soup and meatloaf and stuff like that in there. But in reality, I think what really works for people is smaller bits that they can control themselves. Right, right. Yeah. So this is what happens <laughs> with this. And I'm having a little trouble putting this together because the coconut oil acts differently than the butter, right? But right. I'm going to show you how these work. Oh my goodness, look you guys, it's like playing with mud. So <laughs> one little toasted nut. And if you do the if you do the thing where you saute them first, saute the nuts in, in infused butter, make sure and cool them off mm. because um, <clears throat> otherwise the stuff won't stick. And oh dear, hang on. Oh boy. There. No, oh Jesus. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, this is, a, this is a good example of what happens in the kitchen, right? How chemistry is always different. So work with, so Mary, you're, you're the pro here. So what would you normally do when something isn't binding? Like, cause I know there are a variety of things you could do at this point. I imagine yeah. you could put that in a pan and, and melt them with it on, or you well, could, I think in this situation, <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, it's, that one's coming together. And once you, yeah. once you chill that, I imagine it'll hold up better. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And honestly, you guys, this is one of those things where I just have to work it and mm. work it and I can start see it starting to come together, yeah. but you don't want to sit there for the next hour watching me play with mud. So, ooh, but it's a good example of what, you know, depending on the humidity in your house, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. conditions will be different here than there will be in Nevada. Oh, and so right. this sort of thing is exactly what happens in the kitchen. So actually, this yeah. is a good example to show people because yeah. not everybody yeah. is used to working in the kitchen. So this okay. stuff happens sometimes. Yeah. And so good point, Trey. So here's a good one. Okay. And again, I keep working with this. They're all going to be fine, but I just want to show you. So this and then just kind of roll them around in some coconut. If you want to, there he is. Toast the coconut. That's always nice. See, and it's just a little treat. You could also use sprinkles. I'm a big fan of sprinkles, right? Mm. You want to eat this, don't you? Yeah, it's... I do. But yeah, and so you just keep doing this. Now, if, if this was, um, you know, just me farting around in the kitchen, I would probably add just some plain butter to this. And I think mm -hmm. I might do that anyway. Can I grab it for you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you, want to reach Ooh, you guys, I want to eat this. I'm going to try it not watching. Oh. It's in butter? here, sweetie. Oh, okay. because you know, here in Seattle, Washington, oh, okay. you don't have to refrigerate your butter; it never melts. Probably, uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Now let's see. Let me get you a knife. Yeah, maybe right back there. Isn't this fun? And here we are. Ooh, it's so nice to have a man around the house. Little pieces. <laughs> yeah, just help you throw that in there. There we go. More than that, I guess. Yeah, a little bit more. Boom, boom. Ah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm more than once have tried a recipe and didn't work out exactly like you anticipate. I know Mary's adventurous in the kitchen. So um, <laughs> something else I would encourage you all to do is go on our YouTube channel because we've got a bunch of content where we cook with Mary and just the steps of decarbing and then, and then how to make uh, medicated butter. Like those are two things, those are two kind of primary places to start. Yes. And then from there you can go everywhere. Everywhere. Right? You could you could take your medicated butter, and it doesn't have to be butter, it could be coconut oil like we're using today. Olive oil. It could be olive oil, sesame oil. Olive so you could have like an Asian flavor profile oh, yeah. that's infused. You could have an Italian, you know, these things that we consider prevent you know, herbs de Provence kind of flavor profile medicated and just have those on in your medicine, I mean medicine cabinet, <laughs> in your spice rack, yep, and then add those to stir fry or whatever. So once you learn to make infused oil, mm -hmm. then you can go a lot of places. And Mary's helped yeah. me understand that. So, so keep that in mind too. Because oh, I turned on the oven, okay. but keep that in mind too. Because uh, once you have that that oil, then it's just a matter of being conscious of how much. Yes. Use it, right? Yeah. Use. That's okay. excellent point, Trey. And and what Trey is saying to you guys really is um it's a great way to kind of have those things in your arsenal 
you know, I have always medicated olive oil and medicated butter. Oh, <laughs> 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 um, because like I'm saying, um, everybody's different. So you're going to go to that dinner party and nobody there gets high, but you want your medicine or you want to have a good time or whatever. Um, you can take your own salad dressing, you know, you could take your own um, condiments. You could do what you want to do. Uh, those, those little things are such a good way to go. And when you've got, you know, the infused olive oil and the infused butter, and sometimes all you want is just a, a quick little something, um, you can make a smoothie, you know? It's just, oh yeah, this is way better. You see, you guys see how this is holding together. <laughs> I'm sorry. If you guys knew me better, you'd know that I'm a little bit OCD. And for me, this, this is a challenge, okay? I'm just saying, it's a freaking challenge. Let me do a couple more. And obviously I'll do the rest of these when. Mary, could you talk to us about like uh, medicated sugar or infused oh, sugar? Because I know you've made that. Well, that would be, um, and I'm hoping next year to do a, a tinctures class for you guys. But you know how cannabis is lipophilic and lipotropic. It attaches itself to fats, right? The only other way to really get it in, inside of you is with tinctures. And with tinctures, what you're looking at is is extracting, you know, the, the cannabinoids, the goodness, either with um, strong alcohol and cold or glycerin, a vegetable glycerin and uh, 24 hours in a crock pot. But these, those things, the, um, the tinctures, oh my God, you can do so much with tinctures. And like Trey is saying, easily you can medicate salt and sugar and even pepper. But, you know, because of the liquid, the liquid tincture, it just, um, well, okay, for example, if you were going to make medicated sugar, you would take a cup of sugar, spread it out on a baking sheet, mm -hmm. and then um, however much tincture you want, maybe three tablespoons, you just sprinkle it on the sugar and then dry it in a low oven, 200 degrees for like half an hour, scrape it, you know, mix it up when it comes out, and it just looks like regular sugar, but you know at work when you're getting that slump in the afternoon, you know that a tablespoon of that sugar in your coffee is going to get you through the day. And that kind of thing, the tinctures and, and you know, they make gummies and stuff with tinctures. Um, for, for daytime relief, they can be a wonderful thing. Um, because a lot of people do need medicine in the daytime, but you also have to, you know, take care of the kids and go to work and, you know, mow the lawn and stuff. Um, a little bit of tincture can really help with that. Um, edibles too, of course, but edibles uh, do take longer to kick in than a tincture does. And they also, um, well, it's, it's, it's just easier sometimes with a liquid, like a, a liquid tincture, easier to handle, easier to work with. Speaking of easy to work with, um, I, hope, <laughs> I hope me making a giant mess doesn't turn you off. <laughs> To these nuts because they're really really good but um i think that's enough right to show you guys how it works did you yeah i think you got that right because <laughs> right? and don't touch me <laughs> lick my finger come on <laughs> so thank you all for being here today do you have um do you have any questions about what we've done or any i know we covered we talked about a lot of different components tinctures questions on tinctures are you still working, thinking about edibles? <laughs> yeah, um, I have actually never. So it's teachers. Is that what you're saying? Uh, it's teachers. It's T-I-C-T-U-R-E. It's, um, it's a liquid form. Liquid form. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's probably what our great grandmas would have had in their medicine cabinet, you know, yep. like these almost like potion like, right? So it's, oh, an, it's, okay. it's, it's an infusion. So if you've ever had um olive oil with a stem of rosemary in it you've had uh -huh. an infusion yes and so this is a form of, of medical infusion so really no no different in a lot of ways except for you're using a, a particularly special plant to do it it's a very special plant and you know too trey makes a really good point this is grandma medicine mm. this has been around for millennia and mm. you know only in the last 80 years with all that propaganda you know 
but now we're learning, oh, wait, it really is good for us. And it's really wonderful medicine. And mm-hmm. oh, by the way, you can get high and have a good day as well. Um, <laughs> and now I'm going to have to compulsively finish these. I just want you guys to know. And, and for those of you in the cannabis professional class, which you mentioned, um, here's a here's a reference point and a connection. You all know the name Harry Anslinger, the terribly racist dude that that initiated the war against cannabis. Yeah. If you're interested and haven't seen it, the United States versus Billy Holiday is uh-huh. on Hulu, I believe. Yeah. And it's fantastic. Andrew Day is amazing as Lady Day, and it talks a lot about Anslinger was the one leading the charge in the the witch hunt against Billy Holiday. Mm. So to to connect those those cultural touch points, um, you know, he he had a lot of bad going on in his life. Yeah, um, but yeah, it'll give you a little bit closer up up close look at um, you know, what he considered justice and yeah. um, but a a wonderful movie nonetheless. So, um, wanted just wanted to mention that. Thank you so much for doing this today. Yeah. And we, if you haven't, um, oh, here, just taking a step back, you can go to a retail store and buy, you don't have to buy prime grade cannabis, but always buy clean cannabis. Cannabis, you know, yeah. has been pesticide tested. That's the most important thing. Mm-hmm. But you can buy the little popcorn buds. Yep. They're cheaper than the fine trimmed hand, yeah. you know, top colas. Buy popcorn buds. Some people will even buy shake, yep. right, or trim, they mm-hmm. call it. So you can buy those at a lower price point. Of course, the trim is going to have lower THC in it. Yeah. And so you're going to have a little bit more vegetal material to work with. Right. But with a crock pot, um, with some uh, Everclear kind of grain alcohol, yeah. you can make these extractions at home. Yes. So uh, do a little research online. Check us out on our YouTube page. If you're not on our YouTube page, you're missing a lots, lots, lots. we got a great library there of cooking and and interviews and conversations with physicians and lawyers and doctors and growers. <laughs> so we invite you to join us there and absorb as much of that as you'd like. We um, will begin our next term in January. And for those of you still in class, we're grateful to you and yeah. have a great rest of your holiday weekend. Yes. Thank you, Mary. Oh yeah. And you guys, maryjwhite.com. Any questions, any concerns, you want to buy a couple cookbooks, maryjwhite.com. Yeah, think about the cannabis lovers in your family for Christmas. Yes. Thanks, you guys. Thank you.